Autumn has been delayed a bit. Colours are should be less intense than they are now for but I don't mind. <laughs> Having a prolonged autumn suits me well. The Japan Dell, as they call it here. Loads of rare. Plants. Slumbering for the next season to prosper. Yeah. Come inside. Yeah. Who really? Yeah. Come inside. Who really loves to <laughs> take command in here? It's not afraid of anything really. <laughs> Come on. I meant my dog. <laughs> I got a little bit more scared disposition than he's got. <laughs> and here's a favorite tree. I always take a photo of him sitting next to it and his foot. Every year since he was a, almost since he was a puppy. Which means almost 13 years by now. Yeah. This is a lovely, lovely day to be alive, isn't it? Yeah, now over to the orchids, yeah. <laughs> well, bit of good morning. <laughs> this lovely late autumn day. Uh, me and my dog has just been um, at the botanical garden, as you saw, before the frost comes along, and uh, yeah, we thought we'd grab the opportunity to take a little late autumn walk. It's a bubble films. They like to uh, flower in autumn. I'm going to show a couple of uh, bubble film blooms and the progress from buds to. Um, uh, fully open blooms, yeah, and uh, talk a little bit about them in clips. So, um, <laughs> my dog always starts to drink when I start to film. <laughs> it's funny, yeah, he knows when I'm up to something, but um, in this case, nothing bad. <laughs> well, um, if you didn't see my report or not report session, the video called Sorting Out My New Orchids from um, Swat Orchidin, November 23. Um, I think I'm going to add on a little clip when I was reporting these two guys, just short, so see how I keep all of my bulbos in what kind of medium and uh, how I part them up, so to speak. It won't hurt, and if you already saw it, just <laughs> fast forward and continue with the rest of the video. <laughs> yeah, so here it comes a little clip. Uh, I always use a... Um mix which means perlite tablespoon of biochar the disinfective properties I always use it in my reportings and I use a little bit of Bag moss, long strands, but uh, I will cut them so I'm gonna be cut into small pieces. But it can be evenly, more evenly distributed in the mixture when it's cut into small pieces. Yep, for my bulbs, I always use my hanging baskets, the brown ones. I think it's nine or eleven centimeters wide across in case I want to hang them in the future. The coconut husk fiber chips will really keep the moisture very well. So all I really need to do is go over my bulb of films with my sprayer once a week. I don't even need to carry them into my kitchen. Let them soak in a bucket or such. Good grade bark to the bottom. So I'm just going to leave a little bit of space for that one as well to the back side there. In case it decides to grow on.
but the most crucial part is this one. It needs to have some proper space. Yep. So I'm gonna focus on that growth. The largest one, that probably will perform for us before long. I don't know, but uh, most obviously, it starts to like the new conditions down there, with a bit more water and this red light tube. Of course, the red and blue and white, but the whole full spectrum. But anyway, I wouldn't imagine to see such a good progress. So it took a couple of months, but uh, <clears throat> autumn time is the time for the bulbos. I think at least all the bulbos I've had or have <laughs> has ever bloomed in. I think has ever bloomed in uh, in, in 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 autumn. Yep. Yeah, now all we need to do is wait for the buckleberry. Ugh, Elizabeth Ann, buckleberry. Oh, she's growing wide. It's growing well. She doesn't grow any flower spikes anymore. Now one day maybe she will, but she takes up quite a good amount of space here. So, let's see, let's see. Yes, Serpitalum, or shall we say Bulbophil mastercianum, the species, is now fully opened. I thought I'd wait, and I waited, and I waited, yeah. So now she's on her third day of blooming, fully open, that is. And well, when it comes to Bulbophil, you should be very, very quick. <laughs> you don't know how fast they can go over these guys. Some only last for a couple of days. But she's wide, isn't she? Around seven, eight centimeters wide, cross. <clears throat> well, anyway, she's um, she's orange-ish. Uh, her color is getting better and better. Um, at first, I thought she would be uh, uh yeah, plain yellow, <laughs> boring. No, <Nope. laughs> but according to the pictures, when yeah, in each and every web shop, she's always orange. Lovely orange with some kind of red tinges. She, yeah, I think she's got it all. Smells, not, ah, yeah, the smell's not bad. I mean, she doesn't smell anything. Maybe like rotten leaves or falling leaves. Not so bad, not at all. Not a smell you can feel. <clears throat> Uh, as long as you don't sniff it, put your nose all the way onto it, to the flower. But she's great. Starting on new growth as well. Uh, yeah, two new growth even. I mean, that's, yeah, that's great progress for an orchid, which only costed around seven euro, and was supposed to have two years to flowering size yet. So this was a pleasant surprise. Huge flower for being a, yeah, such a small plant. Of course she can grow wider but uh, it's funny to see that she can bloom this tiny sized. So I'm happy for her. The more I look the more I see. Wilberfilm lot rotulianum. Also species. Um, let me see here. It's a replacement plant for the one I thought would do well in the cabinet, to which it didn't. So, um, and it didn't like it mounted either. But, to keep it this way, it obviously worked. But, uh, I need to be more consistent with my watering. And look what's gonna happen when in the right time period, which is autumn, <laughs> and under the right kind of lights, which is a little bit more um, red and blue and white, the, the whole spectrum. Great lights to start to induce flower spikes, yes, obviously. So I found the right spot and the right conditions and right treatment for my bulbos. Slowly um, developing. 
So, yes. Let's see what happens in about two days' time. Uh, I'm not sure. I never had this uh, bulbo in bloom before. So, if this is what it's supposed to look like, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe it's going to open up more. But, uh, well, if that's the case, I'm going to show that to you. Well, <laughs> it's the color is not really as expected. Um, it's not pink. It's not purple. It's a uh, greenish uh, base color, as you can see. Covered with some, um, ba -ba. <laughs> how shall I describe it? Uh, vino color striations or spots to them. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I cannot describe it. All right, uh, yeah. But I bet you can see what it looks like. Uh, well, just when I thought that I've got most ugly Rochellianum bulbo in the whole world, just a total disappointment. What happens? Just in a couple of hours time it starts to open so now it's just like a uh, Cinderella <laughs> isn't it went from being kind of ugly plain in a way to a total beauty ah, now we're talking let's see tomorrow Actually, good colored now. You guys, look. The ugly swan has become a beauty. Just like Cinderella. <laughs> the transition into something very, very lovely from, yeah, out of nothing, really. Ah, thought I received a very, very bad sample of this orchid really i thought it was finished <laughs> that's it yeah i didn't know that these guys would unfold after three days the very 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 same state yes so i was waiting for it to crumble up and go over <laughs> when it suddenly just burst open <laughs> But anyway, I look at the fringes. It's so cute. Um, to be honest, it it actually looks better now than all the pictures I've seen all over the internet. Except for the colour. I thought the colour would be a little bit more pink, light pink. A little bit more like Elizabeth Ann Buckleberry. But, well, it's nicer. I already have that orchid. I don't need two of the same variety, the very same looking flowers. So uh, this is very, very good news, I think. Look at all the details. It's a work of art done by nature. Look. Yellow background color. Nature, Mother Nature is really fantastic. And this orchid is not even stinky. It smells a bit like, well, it's not perfume by any means. I wouldn't want to convert this scent into a lovely perfume. Yeah, people wouldn't like it, and I don't think I would like to carry it around either in the long run. <clears throat> but it smells a bit like, um, it's very, very difficult to de determine. Um, but it's not very prominent. It's there. Yeah, I read about it on Google and people were suggesting uh, peaches. Well, maybe. Maybe fruit. Fruity scent. But absolutely not. Rotten fish. <laughs> but maybe I, I got lucky. Maybe this one is just a non-stinking variety. That curling decided to uh, keep on growing and developing in the nursery. Just like we have this warm, tolerant Cylogeny cristata, which grows a bit longer um, 
pseudobulbs um, along the stems. Yeah, that's how we can tell the difference from warmth tolerant ones and the uh, cooler grower. Yeah, so I am so happy with this purchase. I can recommend this one. Uh, I found it at the uh, division section for I think six euro for a flower size one, which turned out to be this quality. And the very right, non-stinky kind. Next to it, um, it's the Bulbophyllum gutulatum from the Orchid Show in Lund. But it was last year, uh, 2022. 20, um, I got this one as a, some kind of replacement plant. I, I, I bet I still got the old one as well. Uh, a teeny little poor thingy. Uh, squeezed into together with something else. I'm not sure. But anyway This was a much better plant Funny growing pattern, don't you think? My old one put out Kind of not long but 10 centimeter four inches long spike From here Leaf joints shall we say but this guy started with putting out a second leaf and then producing a kind of sort of uh, <laughs> kind of sort of twisted uh, flower spike but you can <clears throat> I'm trying to give you guys an idea of what the flowers sh should look like yeah like this but not so crumble up <laughs> a bit more straight of course and um, it should be a couple but kind of sort of long lasting for being a bulbo which means one week but Anyway, good new growth. It's been inside the whole, my apartment the whole summer. But if you look at the back side of the leaf, I mean, it's nothing to brag about. I wouldn't want to write home about this orchid. But she's uh, always dropped the leaves and kind of finicky. Um, will easily catch stuff. Uh, whatever it is, fungus, spy mites. So, but these leaves are clean. They really did come out clean. So, um, and plump and lovely pseudobulbs. So, loads of water. Yes. Well, um, here's my Bulbophyllum falcardum. I have this orchid for about five or six years now. I don't think I ever reported it. Maybe that's the reason why its flowering isn't so frequent anymore. But... It's been a very, very good and reliable bloomer, spiker, <laughs> now I'm making up words, <laughs> in the past. So every autumn it blooms. Puts out spikes. It looks like this, for starters. And then you can see that it's slowly developing these yellow hoots. Yeah, you can see it in close-up. It's kind of uh, spectacular, interesting. It takes about two days and they will fade, so... It's beautiful for only a short while. You can see for yourself. This one has been out for two days. So I was too late to film it. But it spikes on s in several places every time. Um, it's quite dehydrated, I can tell. So I need to be more consistent on the watering regime. But, um, but anyway, reliable bloomer. More interesting than beautiful. Spikes a lot, many spikes each time it starts to bloom, which uh, most often occurs during the uh, autumn period. So, yes! Well, you guys, I was a little bit disappointed that the Bulbophyllum aradum didn't bloom. So, now we've got a flower spike on the aradum as well. <laughs> Can you catch it? Ouch. It's not easy. Yeah, it's a little, little spike. Um, I think... No, I don't know. This is a new growth, perhaps, but that one is definitely a spike. That's great. Well, I also did try out uh, to keep a couple of my Bulbophyllums mounted. Uh, yeah, Master Cyanum, my old one, and um, Rochiliano, my old one. Well, I'm not going to take the responsibility for their health, really. 
they've never been good plants, so no wonder they didn't like it when I, uh, <laughs> um, I got into, into the final act on those guys and mounted them. Yeah, surprisingly enough, they didn't like it. <laughs> but, uh, ugh, let's open this uh, heavy door. Anyway, this is the only Bobo film I've got in here. And still, well, it's damp. And it's nothing wrong with the orchid. It's just uh, dust and uh, some debris or such. It's the um, Boba Film Frosty Eye. Never bloomed, but I, I haven't had it for... I think I had it for one or... No, it's been longer. Two years, must have been. It's from Rulke. Hmm. I don't remember. But it was a very, very tiny plant when I got it. And it should be a small-sized plant, so... Finally, it's flowering size. I think it's doing great, except for the colour. Let's just um, cheat a bit. As you can see, <laughs> I'm not fooling you. <laughs> yeah, it's just a bit dirty. So, a good sized one. But she's gonna stay there. She likes it up there. So, um, uh, I'm not the best bloomer yet, <laughs> I've seen. <laughs> Yay, I cannot wait to dig into this area and spray each and every one of the plants with neem oil for five days. Ooh, what a heavy workload. But that's the way it is. I see insects wherever I look bad. <laughs> no, it's no insect. <laughs> anyway, that's the video. And yeah, I hope you liked it. That's how I keep my bulb films. So, uh, well, really not so difficult orchids to keep. <laughs> like humidity, quite a lot of water. Um, kind of steady temperature, wise. They don't need all that much fluctuation in temperature to bloom. Um, many of them are autumn bloomers, as you saw. And yeah. Some of them don't really like to be reported, such as the Medusae, which often arrives mounted, unfortunately, but I see the point, yeah, but it's very, very difficult to keep it alive, mounted. I tried it out inside the cabinet and it rotted instead, so eh, either this or either that. So if you can find a Medusae, pod it in a hanging basket, for example, um, just um, be happy, <laughs> and it's going to be a, an easy grower, an easy bloomer, wintertime bloomer for you. I'm searching out for another one, as you can hear. So, well, enough talk, and I wish you guys a happy day, and see you guys soon. Bye bye. Thanks for watching.